Um, good morning, everybody. I'm going to try to go through this fairly quickly. So, this is a, a lecture about. Is it going? Yeah. Okay, I just don't know where the Zoom is. This is something that I use in my practice for all of my patients for 25 years. It's really been a very awesome tool. Um, we're going to go through the tongue body, its color, its shape, the coating, tongue areas, and then I'll just summarize a little bit. Um, the tongue color. You're going to see there's, there's a lot of extra information with regards to coloring of the tongue body. Basically, the tongue body itself, as opposed to the coating, the tongue body represents the material inside your cells. And the tongue coating is going to be this, the uh, material outside of your cells. You can take the mirrors that I gave you so you can try to check and see which, how your tongue compares to some of these pictures. A pale tongue is going to be um, anemia or digestive weakness or basically a coldness. A red tongue is going to be like a heat condition of heat. It could be fever, it could be hot flashes or dehydration or an infection for that matter. A purple tongue could be in areas of the red tongue generally. It's going to be stagnant blood or stagnant energy and it could be severe, severe weakness. Um, here's some pictures. Here you see the purple tongue. Here you see the red tongue. Here's your red tongue. Here you see a pale one. This one's kind of glossy wet. Um, we'll talk about the shapes here. We're just looking at the colors. But you can see right away that there's, you're going to have a, quite a variety of, of um, colors here. Now, the shape of the tongue. You're going to have um, a swollen or thin, like large or thin. You're going to have stiff or soft or, you know, flaccid. You're going to have trembling, elongated. There's a lot of different versions of, of the, um, the shape. When we talk about this, this swollen and puffy one, you're going to see teeth indentation marks because the tongue gets larger than the mouth where the room for it is. So you'll, you'll typically see um, the indentation marks. That means spleen energetic weakness. That's the ability to transform and move the fluid. We're still talking about the energy and the material inside the cells. And that'll, that's sort of like inside your body deep, more deeply, more physical. And uh, if it's a thin tongue, you're going to see deficiency in blood or fluid. And fluid could be water, it could be lymph, it could be some of the, um, the, the um, material inside the cell is just deficient. It could be malnourished. Uh, trembling, that could be injury, it could be um, a severe weakness, it could be, um, yeah, somebody has been traumatized. Um, and so it's kind of an imbalance in the nervous system that actually shows up. The longer you hold your tongue out, the farther back in time you're showing like where this perhaps happens. So when they first put out their tongue, it may not tremble, but it might start to tremble just like within some seconds or like say half a minute. Then you're seeing that back in their history they had an injury. If it's elongated, that means a real kidney kind of heart imbalance and perhaps a condition of heat. Um, the shape continues. If the sides curl up, like just the edges curl up, that's usually liver energy stagnation. Um, the central crack you'll see on some people's tips. That is it's called the heart crack. It's a, it's a disposition, it's a, a propensity towards perhaps developing a heart problem. Might be the way you die very gently, go to sleep, the heart stops. Not a bad thing, but it, it, it's, it's something that you're probably born with. Doesn't have to develop into a, um, into a heart problem. Um, a short central crack, which I actually have a little bit of, that's a stomach deficiency. The crack in the center of the tongue represents the connection between your lung, a heart area, and your kidney area. It's the central line in your body. And if that energy is strong, which you can tell I have that, um, then your energy is kind of, um, it, when, the, when the crack is there, it means your energies are stronger than, let's say, your physical resources. Um, many small cracks is more like perhaps all through the tongue, maybe um, horizontally as opposed to um, vertically. That's a heat or fluid deficiency. Um, so you can say that the, the, the vertical line represents the vertical energy uh, flow pattern in the body, and the horizontal lines represent a segmental kind of energy disturbance in a certain area where those cracks show up. Oh, let me go on. Okay, here's some pictures. Here's the rim. Here's the rim again. Here's that like purple tongue again. Here's the teeth indentation marks. See it again. See the flattened tip. That's the shape disturbance. Here you see the red tip. There's the central crack. There's a um, there's a crack that goes down to the tip with a, with a dent right where the heart area is. So that pro person probably really will have some heart problems. Here's those horizontal cracks I was telling you about. Just a quick overview there. Um, tongue coating. Now we're talking more about 
the space outside of the cells surrounding the cells as opposed to inside the cells of the body. So, and it could also be your relationship outside of yourself to your environment. So, inside, outside, relative concept. If it's thick and white, we've got congestion and coldness, kind of like you could have a cold or you could have eaten food that you're having trouble digesting that's in, in your body floating around, kind of gummy things up. If it's thin and white, that's a digestive weakness. If it's dry and yellow, that means dehydration, fever, heat. If it's yellow, thick and glossy, that's like a fever infection, perhaps heat. And if it's peeled or absent in places, <clears throat> that's low body fluids or chronic illness. Um, here's some pictures. You've got the peeled, you've got that yellow glossy there, you've got um, the extra white coating there. Um, you get the extra white fur up in here. So that's that's pretty much you even have little little pimply spots on this one we'll talk about. Um, okay. So now the tongue areas, all these informations we're talking about is that what's really interesting for treatments is to say which organs are involved, which areas of the body do I want to be focusing on. So you'll take the information that we were talking about earlier about the color and the shape and the you know the, the qualities, and you'll you'll see where there's um, raised areas. You can see a raised area there, a raised area there. You can see raised areas along the side here, not just the right, but it's actually a little puffy. Those will be the areas of the tongue that you're going to be concerned with. Maybe it's a liver function, maybe it's a digestive function, maybe it's like here she's got emotional disturbance a little bit with the heart circulation. Um, you've got this dent area, which means there's a deficiency in the digestive function. So what I like to do in my practice is look where the where the extra is, let's say the, the bumps or the swellings, and move that extra energy to where there would be deficiency. The body will move the energy from an excess to a deficiency. So my concern would be look at the areas where there are bumps and mountains or a lot, you know, excess and just treat that. When you release those constraints or that pile of energy, it, it will distribute to the right places. So here's a summary. Just an example. You can find the correlation between the areas of the tongue and the internal organs we were talking about inside the cells as well as around the cells. The whole body, we have a whole holographic system. Here's an example. You see how look, she looks really nice and sweet and she looks healthy and friendly and all. Look at her tongue. It's elongated. It's tight. It's got the white coating there. She's got the red tip. This is a girl. Even though she looks like she's really nice and happy, she's actually really, really upset. She's had an emotional upset. She's very narrow-minded, very rigid in her thinking. She's actually a little inflexible that way, maybe even a little bit stubborn. And you wouldn't know this from her expression.